Today I've got more of a fun one for you guys and it is also the April design challenge and uh, what this is going to look like, mine's kind of a, a goofy example, but uh, essentially we're creating a browser fill that is dynamic and sort of three-dimensional using the parallax scrolling effects that are built into Adobe Muse CC. So in my example here as I scroll, you can see that there are these clouds here in the background and these clouds are moving from right to left. And no matter how long the page is, they're going to scroll infinitely. The clouds are just going to keep going and going and going because they are from a graphic that is tileable. And uh, I made this graphic myself in Photoshop. I just didn't go off the left or right edges. So basically, I just have these clouds tiled over and over again. And it may look like a browser fill. It might look like it's just a simple browser fill. But if you look closely, it's actually layered. There are clouds moving faster and clouds moving slower. So it's uh, much more three-dimensional. It adds a lot more depth than just a browser fill that's moving. And now I'm going to show you guys just how easy that is to do. So the first thing you'll want to do is head over to museresources.com if you want to follow along and you want to use my cloud image. On museresources.com, I have uploaded to the graphics section toward the bottom here, cloud header. So you guys will want to go download that. It's a tileable PNG graphic of clouds to use as a flowing background graphic. You can use it in the background or the foreground. I'm going to show you guys that you can really put it wherever you want. And this could also work as a header or a footer as well. So, what I'm going to do, uh, I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to download it again, but I'm going to head back over to Muse, and you can see here I have the Swimmy Bunny page that I was working on last week, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit just to give myself more space, because I've got my screen resolution turned down so that everything's nice and big for you guys on YouTube. So, the first thing I need to do is I need to make a container for these clouds, and I'm just going to go to the top and choose my rectangle tool, and I'm going to drag from the very top left corner of my browser fill all the way over to the opposite side and down a bit. I'm going to make mine 500 pixels tall. And you don't have to follow this, but when you snap to the side, you should see that width instead of pixels should say 100% width. If yours doesn't say that, you might be a little out of date. They added that in a recent update. So I'm going to go 100% width and I'm going to go 500 pixels tall. I'm also going to go back up to the top and get rid of the stroke by turning it down to zero and I'm gonna set my fill to be transparent instead of a solid color. And again, with that 100% page width thing, you just wanna make sure your box goes all the way to the edge of the browser fill, all the way up to the edge of the gray, essentially. And when you do that on both sides, this will stretch to fill the width of the browser. And the reason for that is people's screens are different sizes, people's windows are different sizes, and you want these clouds to go all the way off the edge. So now that I've got my box established, I want to select that box and I want to go to fill, the word fill on the toolbar at the top. And I want to grab my image of those downloaded clouds. So I'm going to click on the little folder next to image and I'm going to find my clouds here. It's under swimmy images in my case. And here's cloudheader.png. So I'm going to open that file. And now I've got my clouds. My clouds are now in my document. Uh, the thing is, I don't want them to be original size. I want them to be tiled horizontally. That means it'll keep going on and on and on as the viewer scrolls down and down and down. These will continue to flow to the side. If it's not tiled horizontally, the first batch of clouds will go by and then no more clouds, which, you know, that might be what you want. But in my case, I want them to keep, keep coming along. The other thing I'm going to do is position this center um, so that way they're already kind of going off the left rather than just coming in from the right. It looks like the clouds have already been going by all along. And tile horizontally, centered up, that looks good. And now the motion piece. Uh, let's go and preview this real quick in the browser just so you can just so you can see where we've ended up. The clouds are just sticking on the page, right? As I scroll, the clouds scroll just like anything else does. Um, there are two things that we have to do. Uh, back in Muse, I'm going to first pin this box to the top center of the browser. Uh, on the toolbar, you'll see there's this little pin option with six anchor points. I'm going to choose the top center. And now that it's pinned to the top center, let's preview it in the browser again. See, now the clouds stay put. They stay at the top, uh, which is part one. We need them to go side to side, but at least now they're not just scrolling off of the page. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is make them move from side to side. So with this box selected, I'm going to go back to the word fill. Then there's a little sub tab here that says scroll. And on that scroll sub tab, I want to turn on motion. And I want to set my key position to zero, just so you guys aren't distracted by that number, because that number in this example doesn't mean 
as much as it usually means. So I'm just going to set that at a, at a clean even zero. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my horizontal scroll speed to 1. So my vertical scroll speed is also at 1. And you guys might be thinking, wait, you don't want that to scroll. You want that to stay put. Um, but a vertical scroll speed of 1, uh, it's as it relates to the fact that it's pinned. So it's going at 1 times the speed of its container, which is pinned. So it's actually moving at a speed of zero, even though it says one. Uh, the, the pinning kind of breaks that rule. Normally this would say zero, but in this case it doesn't because it's pinned. So just keep that in mind. We want all four of these to say one. And I would also like this to go in the opposite direction from right to left instead of from left to right. But you guys can set that however you'd like. You just want to make sure that everything's going in the same direction under initial uh, and final. So now that I've got that established, let's preview it in the browser again. Sweet. So it looks like I've got my first layer of clouds going by from right to left. The next thing I want to do, I would like these to bleed off the top of the page. So I'm just going to scoop my whole box up. And when you drag up or down, you'll notice it's easy to slip off and uh, slide your box left or right when you're just trying to go up and down. So as you're dragging up, if you just hold the shift key, it'll sort of keep it on a rail and it won't slide from left to right on accident. So I'm just going to drag it up holding the shift key. There we go. And it's now kind of where I want it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to the back. So you can either do a right click uh, or a two finger click if you're on a Mac laptop and go to arrange and then send to back. Uh, or if you like keyboard shortcuts, it's shift along with uh, command or control if you're on a PC. Uh, if you're on a Mac, it's command, not control. So shift, command, or control, and then the bracket keys that are to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. Uh, when you do that shortcut, it sends things to the front or to the back. Uh, if you haven't already, watched the top 10 keyboard shortcuts tutorial because there's a lot of, lot of nifty stuff in there. And I'm about to use another one where I'm going to hold the option key and I'm going to drag, by the way, that's alt if you're on a PC, option or alt. I'm going to hold that key and I'm going to drag my clouds down. And when I drag my clouds down, it gives me a duplicate copy. So now I have my clouds times two. And what I'm going to do with the second copy is I'm going to go back up to fill and make sure that I'm under scroll. And I'm going to make this layer scroll more slowly. I'm going to make this one go at 0.5. This is going to give us that layered effect where it looks like some of the clouds are further away and some are closer. So that one's done. And then I'm going to hold Option or Alt and drag the clouds down again, get a third layer. Go back up to Fill. And this third layer, I'm going to have scroll at 0.2 horizontally. I'm leaving the vertical, of course, at 1 because I don't want to mess with that. And now let's see how this looks in the browser. Uh-oh. Take a look at this. I accidentally slipped my clouds a little to the left, so they're not 100% width anymore. They must be edge to edge against the gray. So make sure you don't make that mistake. So I'm going to preview it in the browser again. And when I preview in the browser, now we've got that beautiful layered cloud appearance that I would not be able to pull off using uh, a browser fill uh, because you only get one layer with a browser fill. So now I got my three layers. Uh, so this is essentially what I want you guys to create for the design challenge if you guys would like to participate and uh, try to win. And there's one other thing I want to show you just for inspiration because uh, this again could be used as a header or a footer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate the cloud box again. I'm going to drag it all the way to the bottom of the page, all the way to the very bottom. And then I'm also going to bring it to the front. Uh, I did the keyboard shortcut there again. Shift along with Commander Control and the right bracket key. So the clouds are now in the front, but I don't want clouds there in the first place. I am going to go to fill. And I have another image that you guys won't have, but um, I created this myself and I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys create. I'm going to go and choose a different image here. And I've got my little my little Mario style uh, PNG graphic here that I created. And uh, I'm going to leave all the scroll effects the same as they are right now. Uh, but I'm going to pin it to the bottom. I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to pin this box to the bottom. Uh, and it does have to be all the way at the bottom of the page in this design view here. And it has to be pinned to the bottom on the toolbar for this to work. Uh, and now when I go and preview this in the browser, <laughs> there I have my little Mario scene that scrolls by from right to left. So you guys can do this for the footer. Uh, you don't have to do, obviously, a, a full-blown cartoon scene. Uh, but you can do whatever sort of footer that you want to scroll by at the bottom. It could be really simple, really small, really minimal. 
uh, or it could be big and complicated like this. And uh, I'm also going to option drag this to the side real quick and I'm going to change the background box here to another layer that I made. I made layer 2 here. And on layer 2, I'm going to set the scroll speed to 0.1, so it's even slower, because things that are further away go slower. Think about the moon in the sky. The moon doesn't seem to move very fast. Trees seem to move very fast on the side of the road, and mountains seem to move very slow. It has to do with how far away they are. So just make sure you follow that basic logic. And now you can see that my foreground and my background are slipping at different speeds. So you can really go nuts with this. Uh, now I have a girl in a bikini with clouds and Mario in the foreground. So, I mean, my, my example does not make any sense whatsoever. Um, but it is just to give you guys inspiration and to show you what's possible with this technique. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you want to participate in the April Design Challenge, then have a look at the description below this video. You'll find a link to participate. And uh, subscribe if you have not subscribed already because I got more videos like this coming soon. And to win the design challenge, you guys must be subscribed. So uh, hopefully you guys win the challenge and uh, I'll have a video coming at you guys soon. The challenge will end on April 20th, April 20th Pacific Standard Time at 6 p.m. And then you guys will see the uh, winner announced on Facebook on the following day on Monday. So good luck, you guys.